All right, guys, back to you. Well, proud Papa there drove 13 hours from Iowa to watch his son play. So far, so good. Oh, man, what a drive. What a moment. And right now, William Reynolds, who has a ace eight, he has raised. Seidel out. Mike Scarborough is going to call with a queen nine of diamonds. I'm defending my button. You're defending your big blind. This is on a wide range of hands. So we have ace eight for the milkman up against the Cincinnati kid with queen nine. It's come ace jack five with two diamonds. Scarborough checks the flush draw. And William Reynolds picking up aces. Well, you said it yourself. You can have a really wide range here. Huh? Ace Jack's not looking good for both of us, is it? I like that five, though. Two chatty guys. And the milkman's going to bet it. Yeah, he's going to bet 25,000. Scarborough does not raise with the flush draw. He just calls. Peel five on the turn. I do like that five, huh? Yeah, it's pretty exciting. For the turn we go, king of spades. No help to either player. Check. That can't be you. And again, Scarborough checks. And the young 22-year-old from Sioux City, Iowa. Well, you can't give a free card off, and he's going to bet it like he should, 70,000. I just think you're just gonna keep pushing me and I go away. Well, the question is, will Scarborough make the semi-bluff here with the straight draw and the flush draw? No. Check. Just makes the call, and he checks in the dark, Vince. Seven in your hand again? I think this is actually a pretty interesting spot for William Reynolds on the turn, deciding whether or not to continue betting. Uh, Jonathan, you made some good points on the podcast. My immediate hit is you should probably check back here. You're going to fold out a lot of the hands that you want to stick around. It feels like you're starting to tread into game theory disaster land unless this guy's just a calling station. I typically would just check back. But you think the bet is actually okay by Reynolds on the turn. I do. Um, I would normally check this back too, to be clear. But there are a lot of villains where you can bet this, I think, very profitably. If you have a villain who you think isn't going to check raise you on their draws, for example, then we can charge the draws and not worry about getting blown off the hand, not worry about getting bluffed. That means they don't have many check raises in them. And we also have similarly or at the same time, our villain has to also be pretty sticky. So if we think our villain has a bad ace and is definitely calling on this card, well, we can get more value here. I would assume we're going to check back the river. Almost yeah. always. If we, if we get called on the turn, which we do, obviously, yeah. it feels like you have to check back the river unless we improve. This way, we also get to show down possibly cheaper. We get to sort of set the price. We get to charge the draws rather than give them a free shot at the river, where then maybe we make no money. They may just check fold or something like that. Of course, we take away some bluffs, but so be it. Um, and also, once in a while, we might hit an eight on the river and be able to get even more value by betting again. Yeah, I mean, there's some good things that come. I, I actually kind of like the bet overall. I think it's it, I think it's marginal between betting and checking. Yeah. Neither seem wrong to me. How about Mike's decision? Because check calling at first seems fine. Like Reynolds has a clear range advantage in this in this situation, being the preflop aggressor. But we talked about it on the podcast, and we kind of concluded, assuming, of course, that Reynolds, as the overwhelming chip leader, is being very aggressive and is going to take shots on boards like this, that a check raise is a, a significantly better play. Yeah, it was interesting to come to that and sort of figure that out as we did the podcast. So, yeah, we're believing that Reynolds is opening the button constantly. Yeah, that seems likely. And probably betting that flop all the time and betting that turn most almost all the time, too, because he has such a massive range advantage and would know that. Even in 2011, I think William Reynolds would be very cognizant of that, right? So that means he's going to be super wide, number one. Number two, look how thin he actually is betting. This is a hand I think he's going to fold to a raise. Um, if we get called... When we check raise, it's okay. We don't have to put in more chips if we don't get there. Yep. I think, in fact, I would choose not to because I would be like, oh, this guy's got a hand. Yeah, two pair plus right. usually. Having a queen is nice. We block the nuts. It makes it harder for us to get three bet here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that, that William's going to have almost any three bets. He may even slow play the nuts sometimes, which would be good for us. Yeah, we could actually hit our flush. Right, or our, sta or our straight to chop. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so there's a lot of good things that can happen. I think we're going to fold out. Hands that are better than ours, like this hand. We're going to fold at hands that are worse than ours, but we're going to bluff the river and make us fold if yeah. we missed. And we're going to win a lot right here with queen high when we only have like, you know, 12 cards that are actually going to improve us in a meaningful way. Right. And what if Reynolds had a hand like deuces yeah. and he's just trying to get him off of a jack or something like that. And the river ends up going check, check on a non-diamond, non-10. That would suck, right? Like, You're the worst. Yeah. So I actually overall like check raising better, but I could see in the moment check calling because it's like, well, 
Reynolds has a clear range advantage. It doesn't make a ton of sense for me to check raise here. It's true. And um, it's it can't be that bad to call. But if you look at the immediate odds we're getting, they're not amazing yeah. compared to our um, you know how often we actually get there. And I would assume if a 10 comes or a diamond comes, it's really hard for us to get paid. Now, looking at William Reynolds' hands, we can see that, right? Yeah. Like, holy moly. How do, no matter what we do, you think he's not going to put another chip in if a 10 comes or a diamond comes, right? Um, so that's problematic, too, and another reason to raise right now. I'm going to raise your spirits right now with Nitrogen Sports Poker. Use the link in our pinned tweet to raise those spirits real high with our monthly Poker Guys tournament. Tell them about it, John. Oh, my God. There's an overlay every single month. They put in something like 40% of the prize pool is just Nitrogen putting money in. We're just automatically doing just that. money Guaranteed. for you. Extra expected value for you. Yeah, it's incredible. And um, often it's more than that, too. Um, they cap the player pool at 300 players for some unknown reason, too, to guarantee this massive overlay. Of course, they also have sports betting. They have casino games. It's all Bitcoin-based, so it's super fast money in. You get your money out in 90 minutes. It's the greatest deal in the world. Surprising when you're going for a flush draw, and now he hits the flush. Incredible. That's normally when a guy checks in the dark on the river and you've been betting. He has something like second pair, maybe third pair. Usually when you're on a draw, you're not checking. If you hit the hand, you're going to be betting. So that was a sneaky play. Let's see if it'll work for him. Look at this. It's going to go beautifully for him because the milkman is going to bet this 200 grand. There's no way, dude. You got There's just no way. Well, that is just a terrible, bad reverse table talk. We're at the Hollywood yeah. Casino here in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, but right now he is playing Hollywood. Trying to act like no way you got anything, no way, and just him hawing around there when we know he is going to raise it. Come on. So there he goes. Well, he's got 547,000 left. That means this raises 347,000. That is the type of dialogue you hear in <laughs> high school games. You're funny. Came to the speech and then check jam. Now, I'm so surprised that Reynolds hasn't run away already. Well, I agree with you. This is a pretty easy lay down, I think, in this spot. He banging it all in on a bluff? If the guy's got enough heart to bluff his case money off in front of his friends and family, that are all here to watch him play in his local casino. Good luck to him. He deserves to win the pot. I'm never going to put him on a bluff in this spot. I'm going to throw away the ace eight. Easiest pot. This would be a ridiculous bluff. Can't call, bro. Just fold it. <laughs> Be a big call if I made it. We all know you're bluffing. There you see William's dad praying to the gods here that his son does the right thing here. You dark checks with the flush draw. Does Mike do it? Does Mike dark check with the flush draw? <clears throat> Mike does it, man. I'd fold if I was you. Did Spike spike it? The former grocery store clerk will be saying paper or plastic in the future if he makes his call. It's like bang, bang's getting banged. This is heavy banging. He banged it all in. Oh, sweet nothings. You're playing to win, right? William Reynolds is trying to talk himself into calling here for some kind of reason. I call. Uh-oh. Well, he does make the call. You think long, you think wrong. That's what William Reynolds did there. Woo! Okay. Um, let's come at this thing chronologically, all right? Let's sure. just take it back to the beginning of the river, which, you know, lasted for eons. And starting with the dark check, before the river even comes out, Mike dark checks with his flush and straight draw. What do you think about that? I'm not... I don't want to date it, and I don't want to marry it. Let me say <laughs> okay. that. Uh, I want to have, A, the option to bet where my draws to come in. I'd be very concerned if William Reynolds has a hand like ace-jack. Now, maybe incorrectly based on what we see happen here. But that if he has ace-jack and I make my flush, that he may check back. Right. Um, he, now, maybe he goes for value with a hand as strong as ace-jack. But there's a lot of reasonable hands that may call us, if we bet, that are absolutely just checking back that really bad river for them. Right. right? We want to give ourselves the option to bet. But it seems like ultimately, based on some stuff that happens later, maybe the dark check is what got us paid. Maybe. So let's let's see how we got there. Okay, so there is the dark check. The diamond has come. Reynolds decides to bet 200K anyway. I don't know how, how to really justify this play. Like, I don't see why you would ever bet 200K with ace-8. You don't even have a diamond blocker in your hand. It's such a big bet. Yeah. It's really sort of a shockingly big bet. It's a lot of Scarborough stack. Now, Scarborough doesn't care with the second nuts, but 
assuming we're trying to get called by a worse hand. I assume this is a value bet. Oh, yeah. This can't be a bluff, right? You really expect it to be a value bet. We're not yeah. trying to bluff off ace 10 here, right? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think we're trying to get called by a worse ace. This could work if we know so much about Mike, and maybe William Reynolds does, to be fair to him. He's been sitting there playing with this guy for hours and hours and hours, right? Uh, you have to know that this guy is going to hero you, even on this board, with this action, with a worse ace, for this to be even kind of justifiable, for you to consider it. I don't know how likely that really is when the diamond comes in and we triple barreled, but maybe it's possible if we've been very aggressive and we've, I just, maybe there's a dynamic there. I don't think it's likely, but it's at least possible. I just don't see this bet working out for value too often, but let's get to the juicier stuff. Yeah. Okay? Cause, Cause whatever happens here, like there's some way to justify this play, right? Yeah. This bet, but I don't know about the future. All right. Let's talk about some of the verbal stuff that goes okay. down because even before Mike moves in, this is what he says. There's no way, dude. You got it. There's just no way. So if you didn't catch that, it's there's no way you've got it, dude. There's no way. All right. This is a very immediate and obvious verbal tell. Number one, that doesn't make any sense at all. Like, <laughs> of course, William Reynolds could have it. He just triple barreled. He, he is the preflop aggressor. He could have top set. He could have queen 10. He could have a diamond, uh, like a diamond flush right now. Absolutely. Like, of course, he could have all those things. When somebody says something that doesn't make any sense and then takes an aggressive action, that's pretty strong. By the way, he's justifying why he's going to take the aggressive action. He's saying there's a reason besides me having a very strong hand that I'm about to raise you, right. which is an obvious strength tell. Right. And um, if we were to get like Zach Elwood wrote a whole book about this and he would describe what you just said as weakening his range, basically. Yeah. I'm not doing because I have a strong hand. I'm doing for this other reason. Right. And I'm telling you what the other reason is even, which in theory should make it easier to call me. Right. Because I must not have it. But of course, that's absurd. Why would right. I tell you that? Um, by the way, we don't need any of these verbal tells to fold as right. Reynolds. We could fold just based on the action. If there was not a single word spoken for the whole hand, betting was extremely thin on the river and we got jammed on. Like, it's a pretty easy fold. I mean, one thing you really would have to ask yourself just looking at the poker of it is what bluffs does Mike have here? It's incredibly hard to come up with reasonable bluffs. We came up with 5X of spades as the type of hand that could get here and then think it's not good enough to win. But right? then Mike has to be the kind of guy who actually takes that hand and jams with it for his life in what is the biggest spot of his life. They've all locked up 100K. There's 275K for first place. And Mike is not the pro. He's the one guy who doesn't have big winnings. Right. I mean, it's, it's tough to sell me that. I agree with that. I mean, even in the real world, who makes that play? Not very many people. I agree. Well, guess what? There's more verbal stuff, too. Yeah. Mike says this. Can't call, bro. Just fold it. Just can't call, bro. Just fold it. If you I didn't mean, catch that. Come on. I mean, he's saying there's a reason that I did this, and it is because you can't call. It's not because I have a good hand. By the way, if that's true, why would I do it? Yeah. If you can't call, why am I raising? Unless I'm bluffing, too, which is crazy. But, yeah. but again, what hand is he bluffing with? The f deuce three of spades? That's like, it just, it's so weird. Right. And then, of course, Reynolds says this. be a big call if I made it. It would be a big call if I made it. And Mike says this. We all know you're bluffing. This one is really weird to me. We all know you're bluffing. Who is, <laughs> who is we all? <laughs> First of all, well, forget that part. It's Eric Seidel and him. Yes, yeah, they we. both know he's bluffing, <laughs> which, of course, you don't know he's bluffing. He just, as I said, triple barreled and has a massive range advantage. How about this? He just got check raised all in and didn't fold and is thinking about calling. We know he wasn't bluffing. He clearly right. wasn't bluffing. He clearly has something. Right. So it's and, super weird to say And by that. the way, if Mike got to the river with a hand that did not become a diamond flush and had to make an aggressive action because Reynolds was bluffing, that wouldn't make any sense. He would just check call because he would have a pair. If Reynolds was bluffing, that would be good enough, right? Right, exactly. So if we all know you're bluffing, I don't have to do anything else. Right. It's just once again justifying why. He, it's, all of these things are just justifying other than having the second nuts, why I am going all in, yep. right? These are all extreme strength tells. William Reynolds should absolutely be picking up on this. He should have picked up on the, the shove being enough to fold, but this on top of it definitely should be enough to fold. Yeah. Now, um, eventually, Mike does walk it back a little bit, realizes maybe he's laying it on a little bit thick and actually strengthens his range, right? When, when Mike asks about the dark check here. Who dark checks with the flush draw? Does Mike do it? Does Mike dark check with the flush draw? And and Mike says, or Reynolds asked about the dark check, and Mike says this. <clears throat> Mike does it, man. I'd fold if I was you. That, now he's saying, like, I actually could have a flush, right? Yeah, it's the first time he's gone the other direction. He swings the pendulum back, and he's saying, I can have it. Before then, he's basically just constantly selling the story of I don't have it. And it's almost like Mike realizes 
that he's done too much. He's pushed too hard that way. Right. And he's like, oh, God, I'm going to lose. This guy's considering it. I'm going to lose him because I'm like, I'm too over eager here, like selling this. Like, I don't have it, which is insane, by the way, because when you have it, why would you sell you don't have it? Unless you're doing this. Unless you're Tom Dwan, you're doing it against Lucky Chewy. Right. You're triple re- reversing. But normal people don't do that kind of stuff. Amateurs don't do that kind of stuff. Amateurs just go the one level. Which is I'm just gonna do the sol- the solar opposite <laughs> of whatever it is that uh, <laughs> that I that I want you to do is what I'm gonna pretend like I have, and right. then you know that that's it. So Mike does a nice little flip back here, and I wonder if this is the the moment. Even though it takes William Reynolds another 30 seconds or so to put the chips in, if this is the moment though where he then like changes the way he really thinks about this hand, and he goes from like maybe I should call. I don't really know why he's already in that space, but then he. He like it's maybe clinches it for him because he hears the words "I'd fold if I were you," which yeah. he probably knows most of the time when people say that he should call. Right, but still, the action alone is enough to fold. This is this is a mistake, right? This is just a mistake by Reynolds. of course. And let's not remember, let's not forget, Mike has already said thirty things in the other yeah. direction, and just this one thing at the very end, almost desperately. Yeah. By the way, like if he started with that, that would be different. By the way, I would still fold this. Of hand course, because I'm like, you just have it, man. And Come ultimately, on. this cost Reynolds a lot because he, yeah. he goes out third, coming from massive chip leader, and that's a big money difference. It's like 170k difference. Yeah, and also the title, which I think really mattered to him. Yeah. What a cray cray hand, people. Okay, so there's a bunch of different stuff we could talk about, but I think it really we should be talking about the river here. So, do you like the dark check? And let's get to it. Is there any way to justify this? This is 10 years ago, in fairness to William Reynolds, too. Like, So he, I assume he'd make different decisions now. But as you watch this, is there any way you can justify this call? Okay, Mike had it this time, but do you think there's a way he cannot have it and take all these actions, both poker-wise and maybe also verbally? We don't think so. We think he always has it. But do you think we're wrong? If so, why? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to hear more about what we have to say on this hand, check out our podcast. It's the Poker Guys It's the Breakdown Podcast presented by the poker guys it's all the same whatever just type in the poker guys you'll get it we'll see you there